Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. Gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound and while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in this ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to share some basic informations with you to develop a very clear spiritual foundation, especially practicing with meditation. So you have to develop it just by yourself. Because when it comes to meditation, it is very important for yourself to know the technique very clearly. What to do when you sit for meditation. Because otherwise, your own mind can create certain, certain ideas, thoughts, imaginations. And we get lost inside our own mind. So that is what happens in our day-to-day -day life, in this conventional life. And so in your meditation also, if you repeat that, then what will happen? That what you experience in this conventional life, it's going to become more and more and more stronger. And there is no exit. So when it comes to meditation, then you always you have to remember to, to observe your mind and know the very condition of mind. Because most of the time in day-to-day -day life, we are more engaged with outside things. We put the attention to outside things. But the meditation means you put the attention to inside. So when it comes to our mind, there is a nature, that tranquility state. It's a kind of like when you have a conscious decision to focus your mind to something as example for the sensation, that is our main meditation technique. Observing, contemplate on inhalation and exhalation. That is our master technique. So once you take a conscious decision to focus to your mind, you bring your attention to that. And you keep your attention to your conscious decision. And that is a kind of like a... a we bring that traction, you keep hold it to that. You go with that. You're trailing that your mind to your conscious decision, your attention, your energy, your effort to conscious decision. So that is a, we call a kind of like a traction, keep holding. And when it happen like that way, Sometimes the distraction happens. 
So this distraction means that your conscious decision start to, to detrail, move away from the, the primary mental object. So that is normal. And it is not a kind of like something that you, you have to be worried because that is the very nature of this conventional mind. And so then how you can maintain very indistractable mind. So that means how you can keep the traction. And at the same time, you have to remember distraction increase when the mind start to attract to something. So the attraction it's, it's a kind of like a take you away and take the attention to, towards something. And sometimes when it happens, we, we encourage ourselves. We enjoy ourselves. We become more happy about it. When attractive things happen. But the thing is, by the time what happens, that will trigger your distraction. So remember then your attraction always going to leave you with the nature of distraction. So then to develop your attraction, one of the important thing not to get attracted. So not to develop the attraction. And when the good things happen, nice, beautiful things happen, keep your attraction to your primary mental object. Be, be focused to the moment. And that will help you. When the distraction happen, you are capable to, to be there. And the other thing is, this distraction come most of time it trigger kind of like we have kind of like a nature inside us and so then always look the distraction what it trigger from inside you Because there is a behavior, there is a mental behavior that you already develop. And it is there. And sometimes that all the perception from outside can trigger that inside behavior and it distracts you. Unbalance you. It, it detrail you from your own mind or from your awareness, from your clarity, from your conventionally, from your peaceful mind, from your undisturbed mind. So then again and again, recognize it. Look into that. So then yourself, you have to work to recognize that the all the, the triggering nature, behavior, attitude, to, to get it out from you. And so once some certain things inside it trigger, and some things that we have from the outside world, the, the objects around us, It trigger that your distraction. So as example, computer, 
iPad, TV, cell phone. So those are kind of like sometimes, just imagine in case you lost your iPhone just only for five minutes sometimes. And a lot of people get panic. And even no reason, sometimes there's no internet connection. Five minutes, you get disappointed. Maybe your cable TV doesn't work for five minutes, 10 minutes. Sometimes it is very difficult for you to handle that. So that means these outside things always hold us. And not only hold us, it maintain us. It maintain us and at the same time, but what happens, we have to depend on its nature. So that create a kind of like unbalance. Then again and again, yourself, you have to look into you and see in this conventional life, how you can develop this balance and how you can keep the traction within your primary mental object or your conscious decision. So the one of the important thing is slow down. When you slow down, just imagine just anything that if we drive so fast, what will happen? It this the traction, sometimes move away, detrail. So then according to the weight, according to the speed, the traction going to different. So the mind the same, sometimes when we think so fast, when we act so fast, it make us unbalanced. So then again and again, distraction is to get out of that. When you develop the, the in, in distraction, what you need to do in the very first level, try to slow down physically, mentally. So that's why kind of like a practicing walking meditation sometimes help, help for you to develop it. And maybe when you do day-to-day -day activities, just slow down and bring your attention to your action and be with there will help you to, to develop that quality a little bit. When you slow down what happened, you become patient. And that, that becoming patient is a mental quality. So the distraction always going to happen. There is no kind of like a mind that you're going to have uh, like a indistractable mind. So the distraction always there. So then what you can do, how you manage your distraction is the key. Remember that. Don't expect don't hope, don't wait for indistractable mind or undisturbed mind. It's not going to happen. So this is a kind of like a misunderstanding. Most of people think when you come to meditation, once you sit for meditation, you should have or the tranquility meditation means, oh, you have undisturbed mind. And it's kind of like a very solid, permanent, it's kind of like a numb, unmovable, kind of like a mind. So it can happen when you die. die. Once you're dead, it can happen to your brain. Some, sometimes, you know, there's people, brain dead people. You know. But 
tranquility meditation is not a kind of like a brain dead practice. In that very moment, you become more aware. You become mindful with what you experience. Even then, the distraction happened or the disturb happened right away, you recognize that and you manage it as soon as possible. That is the power of meditation, the, the, the technique or the practicing meditation means. So then you focus to tranquility, that you tranquilize the mind with the inhalation, exhalation. You focus and you bring your attention to in front of your nose and upper lip area. And when the mind go away, so that means you get disturbed or distracted. So then what happened right away, you recognize it, bring it back. So when you bring it back, you're not going to struggle about it. You're not going to judge about it. No, you're not going to get mad about it. Or regarding your own mind, or you're not going to get mad about the whatever the outside object. You don't have a kind of like a preconditioned mind. It should be like this or like that. So whatever comes in that very moment, you, you become more flexible to manage that distraction. That is a skill. How you can manage it. And the traction the same. Once you settle down, once you get into the path, once you into the flow, it's, it's not a kind of like a, you just uh, put, get into kind of like a autopilot mood and, and then it's going to go. The, the flow is a kind of like a method, you, you, your awareness overtake this distraction, but still the distraction there sometimes, but still your awareness is more stronger. So once it becomes like that, so whatever the distraction happens, you know that. Knowingly itself is the solution for the distraction. So that's why then when you focus to the mind, uh, when you focus to the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation, if the mind go here and there, bring it back. And when you bring it back and when you settle down, slow down. Don't be hurry. Because you are, you are so tuning to this natural process. Inhalation, exhalation. And little by little, you sharp and strengthen your attention. Not tension, not hope. Grab any kind of hopes or preconditioned mind. And more and more, more and more, when you settle down with the attention, little by little, you will see the clarity going to be there. So the clarity is not something that you gain out of thinking. Out of thinking, you may get some kind of knowledge. But the clarity is a rise. It's kind of like a sun rising. Using the, the lights, we can create some kind of light and we can eradicate darkness. So thinking is a kind of like that. But how about the, when the sun rises? It's a very natural process. And it's a very natural process, the darkness disappear. So like that, when the, when the clarity arises through your awareness, it's a very natural process. And that natural process take you to somewhere else because this outside light, when the 
when you develop the understanding out of thinking what happens we our attention go towards the object and that will help us to know something and then we can say oh i know it but through the attention when there is a clarity arise you know the object and at the same time you know how you know it that is different the recognizer the knower you know and then when you see something you recognize it is as something and then at the same time you know how you know that so when it come to truth there are a lot of truth we know but sometimes that even though we know it as truth we don't know how we know that so then through the awareness the clarity arise whatever the truth that you know and at the same time you know how you know it and that is the different practicing meditation especially when it come to the vipassana level of meditation so that is where you from each and every direction you see the recognizer not the object when you see the recognizer of course you going to recognize the object also why because the recognizer arise as a part of the object in the conventional life what we missing we go with the object we we don't see the the recognizer arise because of the object what mean the subject but now we know the object and the subject and how it become a subject also that will give you the total clarity regarding the very process that what you experience as life and once you have it there's no doubt about that moment once you don't have the doubt regarding the moment of experience that mean you don't have any doubt regarding your reality then you don't question it then you don't argue it once you don't have the doubt about the moment of your experience there is no fear inside you that is why you gain the total freedom within your own life within your own moment of experience otherwise out of our experience most of time we develop the fear so that mean rather than finding the freedom out of our own life we build up a prison or we become biased to our own experience and that is where the emotions hide emotionally is a kind of like a sleeping giant inside us we don't see how get it get nourish out of our fear based actions when there is no fear you don't have any emotions kind of like a trigger the the desire so that itself bring the the clarity to inside yourself with your bodily verbally mentally action it's a very mental process that doesn't mean your your conventional life going to change no it's it's, it's going to be you you're going to be more tuned more understand more you are more capable regarding this outside situations you have become more clear about the outside world and that is why you become more flexible with that all 
you're not going to argue or you're not going to change or you're not going to resist or you're not going to war with the outside world. When you have this understanding deeply, you become more compassion. You become more harness. You become more synchronized with the, the outside world. Because you have no desire, oh, what I know, other people should follow. No, you don't have that. Because you know that from where this come. And that is where you become a very comfortable person for each and every one. So out of practice, little by little, you can develop this. So then always remember, when you practice meditation, when you want to keep the traction towards the, the breathing or the sensation of the inhalation, exhalation, if the distraction happens, manage it. When you manage something, don't get panic. Don't get mad. Don't get disappointed. Be smart within yourself to calm down, relax. And slowly, little by little, little by little, you, you start to, to change that. So then when the mind go away, slow down, bring it back, let it settle down. And keep focus and be with that. If the mind go away again, bring it back. So then by the time you develop a very comfortable nature with anything and you become more familiar to bring it back, bring it back. Once you become more familiar with the bringing back your mind to the primary mental object, going away, become more slow down. It's kind of like uh, there's no energy to go, go away. So then by the time you develop some kind of tranquility state within yourself and knowingly what is happening there. So by practicing developing your mindfulness towards your attention and little by little, slowly develop the path. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck, get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan here to toss yourself and say, so oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, recognize it, do nothing extra.
Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. your back side. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, to spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sri Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numu tu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe bhuta numu dan tu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe satta numu dan tu sabba sampatti siddhya Maya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati a buddham puje mi dhammam puje mi sangham puje mi Addaya imaya pati pati a jati jarabya di maranam ha pari bunji sami Idam me punya kam manga savakaya vahang ho tu sabadukko pamunchitum Bless you.